It is my pleasure to welcome you, as you have been welcomed, to the CARFA 63rd Annual uh, Health Research Conference. Our 62nd, uh, which was last year, was in Guyana, and we're very pleased at the outpouring of papers from Guyana. So you see what the conference can do when you have it in your country. They're setting a new benchmark. Look out, St. Kitts, you've got to come good. We have a record attendance. There's a feast of papers. Uh, that address a, a number of priority issues. And the theme of the conference is about strong health systems for economic growth, development, and wealth. And if you've not heard that phrase before, um, what's that got to do? Those health people are always spending money. How can health help with economic growth, development, and wealth? Well, consider that the economies of our region are not growing. As a matter of fact, they contracted last year after the storms, and they contracted the year before. Consider that we have a lot of preventable illness in our, in our populations, costing government, costing families, costing business, costing social security. The social security directors of the Caribbean met in this hotel, no, the hotel across the road, last week and formed a social security and non-communicable disease task force because they are hemorrhaging as a result of this. So the theme of the conference is timely, strong health systems, good evidence to be able to have economic growth, development, and wealth. The, the numbers are incredible, the, the percentage impact on our populations, and that breaks down to people and the preventable health problems, diabetes, hypertension, cancer, which have been talked about. There are cost-effective solutions, both in primary care and in earlier research and prevention. Uh, it requires everyone to work together to be able to deliver those. Now, in gathering the evidence and using the evidence, CAFA plays a very important role, including the hosting of this annual conference, and in a number of other ways, training and capacity building in research, uh, the translation of that research into policy, and having policy dialogues. Yesterday, we had a very lively session on the whole issue of climate and health, with 12 of the chief medical officers spending a day with an expert panel and grappling with what is not ahead of us, what is upon us. So conducting of research is, is a real important public health priority and the dissemination and use of those results to make a difference in the lives of people of the Caribbean. We have an evidence portal on the website. You can go there and uh, uh, see a policy that's relevant to, to the Caribbean. The agency also conducts research uh, on public health priorities of the region, looking at causes of death, uh, the disease profile, and what can be done to intervene. What can be done to intervene, uh, one of the advantages of the CARFA platform is that research evidence can then be taken to the Council of Human and Social Development, the health ministers, the trade and economic ministers, and the heads of government. And we try to make advocacy together with other partners to get policy changes in the region. The research shows that Climate change is a big and, uh, problem that we face. It is upon us again. We're in for hotter, drier times overall. We're in for more Category 5 storms. And we're in for inundation. So when it does rain, as we've been learning, and all the 12 chief medical officers in the meeting yesterday, I said, you know, they have a DBE. And somebody said, what, a DBE? I said, yes, a degree by experience. The brutal experience of surviving some of these big storms that we've had. And uh, people gave very moving accounts of that. Together with those storms, they help the climate change helps to fuel new and emerging disease risks, risks that are increasing in frequency. When you consider in the last few years, we've had epidemics that of dengue we've known for some time. It has been increasing in frequency and severity, but we've had chikungunya and we've had Zika. We've had threats of Ebola with large numbers of travelers moving in and out of the region all the time. We've been protected against measles for a long time, but we've been, our defenses are being tested, both from South America, but oddly enough, from outbreaks of measles in Europe coming here with, with tourism. So between the hurricanes and the diseases, ever more, uh, more than, than, than before, we, we need to be able to respond, and our current and future ability as CARFA as a strategic regional asset and international health authorities uh, depends on having uh, uh, proper research, proper funding. Of course, the economic cost of the infectious diseases are also very significant. 
Uh, SARS crossed the world about 50 billion globally, the threat of Ebola, the flu. Uh, Zika has a price tag that we're still coming to understand because it has left a legacy of children who uh, have special needs. So for us, it's necessary to have a fund that provides uh, some financial support and assistance to the agency and member states in managing outbreaks and threats throughout the whole cycle of prepare, respond, and then recover. We need to be better prepared in the region to respond to a range of public health threats, issues, and concerns that transcend national boundaries and potentially impact on economic and political stability of trade and tourism and access to goods and service. So that whole idea of regional health security, having strong national building blocks and having strong supportive regional structures is something I want to, 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 to communicate. That means having the airlines working with us, which they do, but we need a tighter partnership. And it means having a funding mechanism in place to strengthen rapid response, to be able to get the member state within 24 to 48 hours with the help that they need to contain something, nip it in the bud, prevent economic damage, prevent reputational damage. Our role would be to oversee the operation and administration of that fund uh, and uh, uh, to be able to help countries to, to respond better. So it is my pleasure to, again, welcome you here and look forward to the conference. Uh, today was a feast, and the next few days promise to be just as, as, as good. Thank you. Stay up to date with news, programs, and activities of the government with SKNIS. Like us on Facebook. Listen to us on SoundCloud. Follow us on Twitter. And watch our videos on YouTube. Connect with us today. SKNIS. St. Kitts and Nevis Information Service.